Last year, we introduced great new graphics functionality into Preview. This year, you're going to see a lot of amazing tech being moved into being production ready. Let's take a look at two of the most exciting features coming out of Preview in 2019.1. Lightweight and Shader Graph. Shader Graph is a simple yet powerful node-based system that allows artists to author shaders visually without having to write any code. You can drag and drop nodes in real time and see the results immediately, which speeds up experimentation and iteration. The instant feedback makes debugging and tuning simple. Artists are empowered to create more freely and intuitively. And one of the game-changing features that's coming in 2019.1 are nested subgraphs. So a subgraph is a visual solution for making a custom node that you define directly in Shader Graph. Now that subgraphs are nestable, that makes them a versatile solution for defining a custom content library for your project or studio. This gives your technical artists the ability to have non-destructive control over your entire shader pipeline, empowering your artists to work freely and safely. Lightweight Render Pipeline has been designed from the ground up to offer the most scalable solution for Unity graphics. It's available as a C-sharp package, making the rendering code completely customizable to get the results you need to make a beautiful looking game. It's lean and optimized, so that allows for peak performance on a variety of platforms. And we now have a custom renderer system, which replaces callbacks and command buffer injection, but with the ease of being set up entirely through editor UI. No code required that you can always dig in. It's amazing to have this level of control. Best of all, these are both available now and production ready with 2019.1. So let's take a look at these features in action. Please welcome Jake Beagle. Disruptive Games is an indie studio based right across the bay in downtown Berkeley. We're a small team of 12 very passionate developers with decades of experience working at places like Insomniac, Activision, and Electronic Arts. Our first game, Megalith, released earlier this year on PlayStation VR. Since then, we've been looking at ways to expand our audience and even at platforms beyond VR. When Unity approached us with the challenge to create a mobile demo, we jumped at the chance because of this. But we had a lot to do. We had to change engines, change platforms, and we even switched our perspective from first person to third person. And we had to do it in a very short amount of time. Luckily, using Unity's lightweight render pipeline and their powerful tools, we were able to create a demo that our team is very proud of, and I'm going to show you a slice of today. Now I'd like to introduce our studio art director, Jed Melnick, and Lucas Myers from Unity Technology to walk you through how this demo was possible. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Hi, Jed. Hey. Welcome. Thank you. So lightweight render pipelines going out of preview with 2019.1, and you've been using it to create this uh, game. That's right. Can you talk us through what you did to make this scene come to life? Yeah, well, coming into the project, there was a lot of concern about lighting and performance. I had worked on mobile devices before, and a lot of the times there's a lot of trickery involved, and we have to do a lot of pre-baking to get the light to really work on mobile. But with the lightweight render pipeline, it just came out of the box, working dynamically across the whole scene. Um, you can see here that we have real-time shadows across the entire scene, and you can even see... Are there any light maps here? Or no light. All these shadows are. Yeah, yeah. It's all. This is all working. All, all direct light is is dynamic. What's um, what are all these red lights on the right side? So the red lights. This is our little light show platform here. Uh, you can see. Hello. And it's all working using per pixel lighting across the entire environment. What? Here. It's a lot of reflections on the ground. How did you uh, how did you make those? So those are pre-baked cube maps that we that again out of the box, very easy for us to to use. Uh, the sun as well? That's right. Yeah, the sun as well. The sun's dynamic, so you can see the per pixel specular gliding over it right there. And these, uh, these laser towers, are they they're just shooting real-time lights? 
Yeah, so that's just using the out of out of the box VFX editor, and you just attach a light to one of the particle effects, and they just send it down the row. Great. Um, did you have to do any uh, special material work in the, for this project? Yeah, so Shadograph was huge for us. We used it across the entire map. You can see this little red ring kind of booming at the base right here. Like That's all done in Shadograph by one artist. So it just takes a day for an artist to do it. And this is a huge difference for us because back in the day, it used to be an artist and an engineer working together, and they had to kind of sync up their visions, and it took a lot of time. Gotcha. Uh, but now, we just have an artist working on it directly, and it's exactly what they need it to be. Uh, what kind of uh, hardware does this require? Uh, this is Originally, we were targeting high-end mobile devices, but this is just iPhone 8. So yeah, for, for me, I have an, an 8, and it just works great. Yeah. So. Did you use the shader graph for anything else? Uh, yeah, so let me look around here real quick. So you can see that there's a gradient across the entire environment. So you can see the uh, kind of what, what do you mean? sandiness down here. And you can see kind of the more burnt orange towards the top. Gotcha. That's all dynamic. So you can take this rock, and you can kind of move it up and down. And it's all done world space gradient in the shader by an artist. Um, yeah, and all very performant. The other part that's great about the shader graph is we got wind in there without a problem. You can see right here on the leaves, you can see a lot of kind of dancing around. Over here, you can see more foliage. And that's all just done with Shader Graph by an artist. Very easy to do and a uh, very short amount of time. Wow, that's great. I really love this example of a project that uses lightweight render pipeline and Shader Graph to bring these kinds of graphics to mobile. Let's take a look at another mobile game. Thanks. Welcome, Kevin Summers. Disney Sorcerer's Arena conjures up a world where players unleash Disney and Pixar characters onto strategic battlefields. Players build custom teams of champions and villains from a deep vault of collectible characters, each with their own unique abilities. Let's check out some gameplay. Here we are entering the final encounter of a battle, where your squad is facing off with Captain Hook. As you can see, the team really captured each character's unique style and personality. Each character was hand-drawn by our artists. And while inspired by the classic Disney art style, our game features a detailed, angular, and cel-shaded look. We've stayed up to date with Unity throughout our development. Recently, they've released features that were critical in bringing Disney Sources Arena to life. We've used Cinemachine and Nested Prefabs to quickly and easily build our environments. But the lightweight render pipeline was the real star for us, as it helped us reach 60 frames per second on a wide range of mobile devices, some more than two years old. And it wasn't just about performance. The lightweight render pipeline also granted us access to Unity's new shader graph feature, which really gave our artists a lot more control and flexibility. And for me as an engineer, this meant less time that I needed to spend building and maintaining custom shaders. Win-win. Disney Sorcerer's Arena is currently in beta, but Franz and Lucas are going to show you how our team utilized Shader Graph. Thank you. Thanks, Kevin. Hey, Franz. Hey, Lucas. Look at that. All these Disney characters in my favorite tool. I think that's so cool. I'm so happy we have this game here on stage. Um, you were the visual effects editor. Correct. Uh, or designer, what is it? Designer, I the guess. The artist, yeah. On this project. Um, can you take us through some of the tricks you used to make this uh, game come together? Sure. So uh, let's dive into Ariel's water effects over there. Uh, so this was the cool piece of concept art that we started out with. And with this as our target, I was inspired by a few techniques that I'd read about. Uh, and Shadograph was pretty instrumental in bringing this into the game. It looks like a render. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, let's actually look at a water material. So up here on the left, you can see I have a few parameters that I can mess around with. 
colors to change and but these two textures do a lot of the heavy lifting. So, so. I, like, I see the water's rotating. Is that like a rotating mesh, or does that all come from the material? Uh, that's all done in the shader. Yeah. So, like, yeah, I can like you know make it like more flowy and so on. Can we take a look at the graph? Yes. Yeah, so I'll show you a simple trick that we use to tint stuff in the game. So I sample the texture over here that you see at the bottom, and then. You know, the one with the green and red? Exactly. And then like, I take the green channel, multiply that by a color, take the red channel, do the same, and add them together. And then we can tint it to whatever colors we want in game. Uh, th uh, that sounds really complex. Why don't you just use a water texture? Uh, good question. Versatility. So if we look at this quad, it has the exact same material on it. So what I'm going to do is just change the noise texture to be something a little bit more fire-like and change the colors to be a little bit orange, maybe. And you can already start seeing uh, you know, the water turn into something a little bit more like a tune style of file. You're using the same graph for different effects. Exactly. Actually, over here, I have a few more effects that I made uh, using the same technique. Like I even use it with the particle system out there. Wow, looks cool. Yeah. Thanks. Did you use it anywhere else? Yeah, so I actually oh, well, used well. this on Hades' <laughs> hair. And I was he there all the time? Yeah, he was, he was <laughs> hanging out in the background. And in, uh, in game, when he gets angry, like we change his hair to a fiery red, and he goes into a rage. Yeah. You change it at runtime? Yeah, all at runtime. Hey, um, you've been doing this job for a very long time. How would you approach making effects like these before you had Shader Graph? It was a bit more of an involved process where I'd have to work with an engineer like Kevin. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> but yeah, Shader Graph is so flexible. And as an artist, it's really empowered me to like, you know, get the creative look and vision that we really want in the game. Wow, great. I think it looks really great. And um, really, uh, thanks, Franz. Thanks uh, so much. It's amazing.